The decklist you're about to see in this video was heavily inspired by Luke Tyler's 19-0 Sky Striker build. I think I only ended up changing one card in the entire list because I just liked it so much. So if you want to see someone who's a hell of a lot better than me play basically the exact same build, go ahead and check out his video after watching this one as, yeah, he's a lot better than me and could probably explain this decklist a lot better than I can, so go check it out. So obviously Sky Striker was the art type with the largest question mark above its head as to whether or not it would actually be a viable decklist inside of the Duel Links format, as obviously with it being added to the game, it had to face quite a few challenges. We don't have a main phase 2, which screws over your Hayate, we can't choose our chain orders, which screws over your multi-roll, we only got access to two copies of Engage, and basically only one ofs for all the Sky Striker Link monsters outside of Shizuku, which isn't exactly ideal. And last but not least, probably the scariest thing of all for the art type, unlike basically every other meta deck list currently introduced into Duel Links, Konami didn't bless this art type with some absurdly broken skill that just plays the deck list for you. All the skill does is just gives you some of the cards and then just says, good luck. And even after facing all of those challenges, it's looking really goddamn good. <laughs> So of the 15 games I played with this decklist, I managed to win 14 of them, with the only loss being a game where I think I just had a stroke mid duel and managed to misplay about 4 or 5 times in a row. If you're the Blue Eyes player that happened to beat me and you stumbled upon this video, I apologise for making you witness that. But for the other 14 games, this decklist felt sensational, so without further ado, let's go check it out. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see some more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you are watching this or even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even subscribed yet. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, want to see some more deck lists from me in the future and more videos from me in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. I still have a couple of videos planned around the latest box, things like your gladiator beast and whatever the reptile art type's name is, your I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that, but I'll try to make a video on it, so if you want to see any of that content, remember to like, remember to subscribe, and let's get into this deck list. Alright, so obviously Sky Striker is a brand new art type to Duel Links, so I've got a lot of cards to cover here, so I'll try to speed run it a little bit. Alright, so to start with, we've got your Ray. This card's the only monster in the deck list, and as a quick effect, it can tribute itself to summon out your Sky Striker Link monsters straight from the extra deck to the extra monster zone. It's a very annoying card for your opponent to try to deal with, as if your opponent ever tries to target it with some sort of back row or anything, it can just swap itself out, summon out a Link monster, making it basically immune to most back row or any targeting effect in the game. Additionally, when it's in the graveyard, if one of your Link monsters is removed, it can summon itself back to the field, so a very annoying card for your opponent to try to deal with. Then we've got your Widow Anchor. This card is just basically a target one of your opponent's monsters and negate their effects, and if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, you can steal that monster as well, so a very powerful spell card. Then we've got your Multi-Roll. This card can send cards you control to the graveyard to make it so your opponent can't respond to your spell cards, and additionally, during the end phase, it can take spell cards in your graveyard and put them back on the field, which is a very powerful effect, but it's very important to note those spell cards will be banished when they're removed or when they leave the field again. Alright, then we have your Jamming Waves. This thing, if you control no monsters in your main monster zone, can target one set spell and trap card on the field and destroy it. Then if there are three or more spell and trap card or spell cards in your graveyard, you can destroy one monster as well. And your Afterburners is basically the same card, just flipped, so it destroys monsters, and if you have spell cards, you can destroy back row as well. Then we have your Field Spell. This thing can target cards on your field, send them to the graveyard to excavate the top three cards of your deck list, add a Sky Striker card to hand, and additionally, if this card is ever sent to the graveyard, you can search for a copy of your Ray and summon it straight to the field. So, very very standard combo with this deck list is to use Multi-Roll to send this thing from your field zone to the graveyard to summon your Ray to the field. Alright, then we have your Sharp Cannon. This card can target monsters in your opponent's graveyard and banish them, and if you have three or more spell cards in the graveyard, you can take those cards and put them on your field and just special summon them. So, a very powerful card in a zombie meta with everything being graveyard reliant, you're going to want to use this card quite a lot. Next up we have the extra deck, and of course the link monsters and spell card given to you via the skill. Starting off with your Shizuku. This card basically during the end phase can add one Sky Strayer card from your deck list to your hand. It also offers a nice little attack debuff to all of your opponent's monsters based on the spell cards in your graveyard. 
Alright, then we have the cards given to you via the skill. Starting off with Engage. This card just adds a Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand, and if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard, you can draw a card as well. Definitely the best card in your entire deck. Then we have Kagari. This thing on summon adds back a Spy Sky Striker card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, we've gone through Shizuku already. Then there's your Hiate. This card basically can attack your opponent directly, and when it does so, it can then send a card from your deck to the graveyard. Not very useful in Duel Links, we don't have main phase 2, so we can't combo these two cards together, but it's still important to use this card sometimes, as you'll see during the gameplay, because sometimes you need to use it as a stepping stone before using your Kagari. I'll explain it when we show it during the gameplay. Alright, then we have your Kaina. This card is a really strong card during your opponent's turn, as if your opponent does clear your monster, you summon back your um, Ray, then you can just tribute off your Ray, summon this card to the field, you can target one of your opponent's monsters, and that monster can't attack for the rest of the turn, so stops your opponent killing you, which is very important for this deck list, as there's not a super amount of interaction with this deck, so a lot of the time you're just trying to survive and outgrind your opponent. This is a very core part of doing so. As for the rest of the deck list, it's all just basically tech cards and cards I've chosen to support the art type, with the only sort of weird ones that you might not recognise being, of course, the two copies of Dark World Dealings. This card is exceptionally good in this deck list, and I was thinking about running a third copy of it, purely because this thing loads up your graveyard really quickly with spell cards. It is a spell card, and it discards a card, so you discard a spell card as well, so putting cards in your graveyard very quickly to trigger all the bonus effects of your various different Sky Striker spell cards, so... This card overperformed exceptionally for the decklist, and I'm almost willing to play a third of it, so very strong card. We've got your mind control, which is very good in this decklist because you already steal a lot of stuff, so stealing more things allows you to go into various link monsters using your opponent's stuff. A very powerful card. Only going to play one of it though, because it's very important to have some sort of non-target removal in this deck. There was plenty of different variations I played with Sky Striker before, and those decklists all sucked ass because my opponent would have summoned one monster that was immune to targeting, and this deck just couldn't do anything, so I decided to run a couple of, couple of copies of Ice Dragon's Prison. I'm not going to play the third one though, as I don't want to play too many trap cards, as this deck list is very reliant on spell cards. And of course, this, uh, this card is also just a once per turn card, so not very good to draw into it multiple times with your dealings or with your engaged draw. Alright, and that is basically it for the main deck. Extra deck wise, we've just got your Nightmare Monsters. We're playing this card, which is very important, as you can just create this thing very easily, hit your opponent for lethal damage, you'll see it at least in one of the replays, and a copy of your Ablaze, because there's a lot of, there's currently a lot of um, fire monsters in the meta, whether that be your Shiranui, or even Mayakashi has a fire monster, so this card can help you go into your Link 3s fairly easily. And that's basically it for the deck list, so without further ado, let's check out some gameplay showcasing this list in action. Alright, so let's jump into it. So I've only saved 5 replays today, as this deck list is a very slow sort of grindy deck, so if I was going to save a whole bunch, this video would be like a 40 minute long video, so I've only saved 5 replays, but you'll definitely get a good idea of how this deck list works from these replays. So I'll try to cover basically all the grounds you need to know about Sky Striker. Alright. So starting off with the 7th game of the uh, win streak. Alright. So starting off by putting the field spell on field, and you're about to see the first important interaction to note with Sky Striker. So this card, like I said during the deckless portion, can send cards on your field to the graveyard in order to excavate cards. So you can use this card to target your Ray, and then Ray can tribute itself in response, and you'll still get the excavate, and you'll still summon out a monster. So, very important. So I summoned this card first, just in case I happen to draw it into an engage, because otherwise, if I'd summoned out my uh, copy of my Kagari, I would have just not been able to add anything back from the graveyard, and if I summoned out this card, I wouldn't want to go into Kagari afterwards, because you can only summon them once per turn, so basically just summon this thing, so if in case I draw Engage, I'd have a, uh, I'd be able to recycle it. If that made sense, I think I butchered that, but anyway. Any on your Shizuku, so during the end phase, I can add a spell card from deck to hand. Alright. So if you haven't guessed already, Sky Striker is a fairly difficult decklist, so if you don't get the hang of it right away, don't worry. It is a fairly diff difficult decklist, but once you know how all the cards work, you should be okay. Alright, Ice Dragon's Prison going to be banishing two cards. I don't know why I didn't banish both Dark Magicians here. I don't know why I've left him with one. That was fairly stupid, but anyway. Prince going to Fusion Summon, summoning out his The Dark Magicians. Beating over my card, allowing me to summon back my Ray. 
where you can swap itself out, grabbing the Shizuku, searching for another engage during the end phase, and passing back. And yeah, he's so dead here. Engage, searching for a card, grabbing my seal and my negate. He sets a card, I'm gonna pop that, because why not? Area Zero going to be I could literally kill him here, I'm just I'm just messing around at this point. Searching for a multi-roll, putting multi-roll on the field. Engage because why not? Alright, finally deciding to steal his monster. I think. Soon. There we go, stealing his monster. Normal summoning my ray, hit him in the face. Hit him in the face, and he is dead. Alright. So that was just bullying a Dark Magician player. Now let's get into the actual serious replays. I think this one was the Brick Hand vs Zombies, and it was probably the most fun replay of the bunch. This really shows how cool Sky Striker can be. So I Brick Hand with this one. I didn't open any way to get a hold of my Ray, so I couldn't go into any Link Monster, so... We started off with a bit of a rough Brick. Alright. So as you can see, no way to get a ray onto the field right now. No way to pop the field spell to search, just... Yeah, and even after looking at the top three cards, I still didn't hit one. At least I hit a copy of um, Widow Anchor though, so at least have a negate, so that's something. Alright, my opponent is playing some sort of zombie Shiranui pile or something. I, I don't know, something. Alright, he's gonna use his Uni Zombie, I'm going to negate that. Basically I negate that because I know if I let it go through, he would just put his uh, Mizuki in the graveyard and summon back the zombie monster and I'd be pretty dead from there, so... Thankfully he couldn't, couldn't extend any further from there, so we're good to go. Bold Rock summoning to the field, which is a very scary card, but thankfully it only negates some um, monsters. So we're going to activate my uh, Afterburners, targeting it to remove it. Alright, and popping the field spell as well. Then we can use our top deck to engage to search for the ray, draw a card as well, because we've used a bunch of spell cards. Area zero, the same combo you saw in the first replay. Alright, and I think we hit we hit the graveyard banish off this, which is very good in this matchup. Kagari can add back the engage on summon. Engage getting a search, grabbing my widow anchor, and top decking into another engage, because I'm insane at this card game. Alright. Searching for the staff, getting another card draw. Bashing his monster and then chaining to it. This is important to note because obviously you can't use these spell cards when you have stuff in your main monster zone. So if I want to steal both these cards at the same time, I have to chain it at the same at the same time. So stealing one monster, stealing the other, using all four of these to summon out a copy of. Oh, sorry, three of these. Sorry, summon out Nightmare Unicorn, discarding, removing the final monster before normal summoning. I think no shark canning to revive once again. Then going into my Rastal Tiger, whatever this card's name is, making itself 4,000 attack, basically access code talker at home, and my opponent is dead. Alright, that was a banger replay. If that doesn't get you excited to play Sky Striker, I don't know what will. That was so cool. That was literally a brick hand into just stealing all of your opponent's stuff, making a Link 4, smacking your opponent in the face. Absolutely insane. Alright, so this one was a live twin, I think? If I remember. Alright, once again going first. This deck was actually much better going second. It's a, uh, yeah, because you got a lot of removal and stuff and you want to use all your spell cards on turn one to get them in the graveyard. And you can't really use your removal stuff if they haven't got anything to remove, so. It's a much better deck going second, at least in my opinion. I think most people hold that opinion. Alright, activating my Dark World Dealings to be um, drawing and discarding. Trying to get as many spell cards in the graveyard as possible. Probably should have used that dealings before I used the engage, actually. I probably could have got three cards in the grave somehow there and missed out on a draw here, but anyway. Alright, swapping out, grabbing my Kagari. So I can add back that engage from earlier. Also grab me an engage from that, so hit both my engages once again, because I'm insane at this card game. Alright. <laughs> I've made the engage, searching for the graveyard banisher. Setting my staff and passing the turn. Oh, sorry, going to Shizuku first, of course. Adding my Afterburners. Alright, and here comes the Live Twin gameplay. So at this point, I am I know Live Twin is a lot of annoying tricks, but they can just dodge your back row and stuff, so I'm just gonna let my opponent go through all, this, all the um, Link Climbing stuff until I can just try to Ice Dragon's Prison him. So let him summon his keys to kill, let him use all the effects, and then I'll just uh, use Ice Dragon's Prison, 
And, yeah, no more shenanigans. Alright, does summon the Leela, but he can't do anything from here. He can just summon his piece of kill, and that does literally nothing. Alright, he's gonna use his own Ice Dragon's Prison. I've actually seen a couple of people do this against me now. I don't think people realize this is a warrior, and these cards are machines, so he doesn't actually do anything, but he steals the other card as well for some reason. Just throws the back row out there. And we use Alter Burners, popping his card, which will also pop the crank down so I can have my monster back. Send that monster to the graveyard to look for a card on my deck. Hitting a Ray. Ray going to be swapping out for Shizuku. And unfortunately, we got hit by a warning point here, which is really annoying because this card's arrow is pointing upwards. So I probably should have played around this by summoning out one of the other ones with the arrows are pointing downwards, but a little bit annoying. But this game's basically won from here, because I can just yeah, I can just steal his I can steal his live twin, hit him in the face with it, clear off his live twin, just set my multiple back row, activate my um, multi-roll to set my back row once again. Yeah, that game was hella done. Alright, so I think I'm to second to last replay. Yeah, this deck is re it's, it's hard to play, and it's really fun to play, because it's very satisfying getting wins in the deck that you're actually putting in, like... Because a, a lot of decks currently in Duel Links, not that it's necessarily a bad thing, are very skill-reliant, and the skills just sort of play the deck for you to some extent. With this deck, it's all just, you need to know how the cards work, and you need to just, yeah. Feels pretty good. Do it. It's also slightly bricky, so it means that uh, every game isn't as uh, set in stone with what you have to do. Alright, so this was a Sky Strike and, Mirror, Strike and Mirror match, which I'm not gonna lie, I hate playing Mirror matches, and the Sky Striker one is pretty unpleasant. I saved this replay in particular because I wanted to show off uh, the way you actually lethal your opponent in the Sky Striker Mirror. Because you can kill them in one turn, it's just pretty hard to do. Or it can be pretty hard to do. Alright. So in this case, I'm going to, of course, remove the back row straight away. Use the Widow Anchor to steal his monster. Linking it off into my own Hiate. Then I'm going to try to get a hold of the field spell and the multi-roll on field, so I can get a second copy of Ray on the field. So summoning the Kagari, getting a search. Using the Engage to search and draw once again. And there we have it, the Area Zero, we have the, um... Multi roll so we can remove the field spell. Summon out one one ray, summon out the other ray, and that's lethal on the field. It's not the most exciting replay, but I want to just quickly show off that you can sort of kill from an empty field. It's just kind of awkward sometimes. But yeah, it's a nice little sort of combo you can do to get there. Alright, and final replay, and I think this was me bullying a Shiranui player. If Sky Striker turns out to be meta, Shiranui is not going to have a fun time, as that is a terrible matchup. It is awful. Because you can just keep banishing their stuff from the graveyard, and if you don't banish the stuff from the graveyard, even going like second or whatever, you can just target the gate, any of the, uh, uh, the Link monster or the big boss monster when they summon it to the field, the Sun Saga, so they just don't get any sort of removal off. It's, it's terrible for them. Alright. Area Zero doing the same combo you saw earlier. Very common combo you'll see in most of your games at this point. Look in the top three, hitting a copy of Engage. Because <laughs> once again, I'm so good at this game and hitting both Engages. Alright, Multi-Roll going to be setting, Engage going to be grabbing. Multi-Roll actually hasn't done a whole lot for me in these games. It's still definitely a required card, because like, even for the last replay I showed you. But the recycling value of this card doesn't actually come up as much in this game, because you don't have that many zones to utilize it anyway, so you might as well just set your cards from hand like we did in this replay. Right, Multi-Roll, I think you can definitely get away with playing only one copy. I think more than that just isn't necessary. You don't even need it to win most of your games, to be honest. Alright. So, going to wait for our opponent to use the spell card and graveyard, and then banish it. Of course, going to be negating this as well. And as soon as our opponent uses the Spectral Sword, that's a fat negate. And we can actually steal that card as well, so if our opponent tries to do any funny business, it won't matter. Alright, end phase, recycling, because we used two different... Uh, as I was saying, multi roll isn't that useful. It's super useful at that moment because I used both the Sky Strider cards, reset both of them. 
My opponent's going to use this, so unfortunately we can't kill him this turn. And we really have to get rid of this card as well, because it's really annoying. So, focus this turn just destroying some shit. Nolte, we're opening a card in the graveyard, so we get the additional draw. Afterburner is going to be popping two cards on the field. Then we're going to go into a Nightmare Unicorn, or Nightmare Phoenix, sorry, to get rid of the last one. Multi roll going to be adding this card back to the hand during the end phase, or putting back on the field, sorry, and passing the turn. Alright. Going to be stealing his monster once again. And even if he tries to keep going, we've still got Nice Dragon's Prison as well, so... He's not having a good time. Resetting the engage. And that's 100% lethal, so... And he's gone. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you didn't leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Still plenty of videos planned around the latest box over the upcoming days. So if you want to see those, remember to like, remember to subscribe. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you see you in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.